This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and uh, welcome to Out and About this Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Day and we are at ThinkTech live streaming network series broadcasting from our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza in Honolulu, Hawaii. And we are still here even though we had quite a scare <laughs> on Saturday, um, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I am your host Winston Welch and I am delighted you are joining us. Uh, where we explore uh, every other week a variety of topics, organization, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and our world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. Uh, joining me again in the studio, I'm very delighted to say, is David Tasaka, and we're going to continue the conversation that we started uh, a couple shows ago because David is a font of knowledge and and wisdom and also positive energy and I just love that about him and he has an upcoming book series it's probably going to be published uh, momentarily or we'll get an update on that on life enhancement series focusing on our health wealth love and resulting happiness and today we are uh, focusing on the uh, love portion of that looking for love in all the right places so with that I'd like to welcome you again to the show David. <coughs> Thank you, Winston. Yeah. Glad to be here. And it's, it's glad, I'm glad to be here too. So, uh, uh, before we get to your your uh, your topic today, I you know you've just come back from the Consumer Electronics Show, yep. and that must have been an amazing event. Fantastic. So, uh, when you were when you were there, obviously this was happening over the last weekend when we got notification at 8:07 in the morning on Saturday morning that our our world might be ending within well. 20 minutes or less. So there was an inbound nuclear, well, it said a ballistic missile, so we could just assume that it was probably nuclear tips since we've been having some warnings on this and the klaxon and it came in on our phone. And so uh, it was a very um, tense uh, bit of time because the, the state took 38 minutes to respond and say, mm -hmm. actually, we made a mistake. So you're in Vegas mm -hmm. and it was it was a 10:30 or 11:30 there, or 10 or 11 there. Um, two two hours. It's two hours. Okay, yeah. so they're they're Pacific time. So, yeah. uh, what did you think when you got these? When you started getting messages, or did people say, "David, what do I do?" Or, or well, the, I never got the the notice via my phone. Okay. The first I got was from Facebook saying, "Oh, you know, this thing is happening," and my logical mind says. This can't be real. And the reason for this is my logical mind figures out different things like who would the missile come from? Mm -hmm. Well, North Korea, of course, because that's the agitation point. But the other thing was how could they do this? And why would they do it? Because it would be nuclear suicide for them. Mm -hmm. So I began to calculate and then I said, something is off. Mm -hmm. and. It's probably bogus. Probably and, bogus. And, and, and then as time went on, I said, it's definitely bogus. It def <laughs> yeah. And my mind said, after weighing all the different factors, I said, this can't be happening. And how many minutes until you went from probably to definitely bogus? Oh, within five minutes. Five said, minutes. Yeah. Okay. Because I had to think in my mind, okay, who would be doing this? Why, why at this time? What would be the the purpose of mm -hmm. this, and it just didn't make sense. So this all presupposes, of course, that Kim Jong-il is uh, reasonably sane, yes, or Kim Jong-un yes, as yeah. reasonably sane, and that he's not mm -hmm. going to lob a missile as just out of spite or stupidity or something along those lines, or maybe that he thought he was being attacked or something mm -hmm, along mm -hmm. those lines. So you, you did the calculus and came out with it. It's, it's all okay. Yeah. How about the people on Facebook that were still messaging you frantically for those 30 minutes? Uh, what was their consensus? I think for them, when I looked at it, a lot of them were panicked because it was something that hadn't happened before. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know how to handle it, and perhaps they didn't have the logical mind like me trying, and maybe the information that I had already gleaned in the past to surmise bogus. <laughs> okay, so did you did you dispense any pearls of wisdom at the time or were you just trying to tell people it's okay, mm -hmm. just calm down? I, I didn't give any input because what I found is uh, people like to shoot the messenger no matter what the message is. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so you were just a, 
a, a passive sympathetic ear that people could, that we were just posting stuff and it was coming in on your feed and you figure, well, we'll figure out, we'll, we'll know in, in 20 minutes anyway. Right, and my greatest concern was that if this had happened, why did it happen and who's responsible? You mean if it actually had happened? Yeah, I mean, I knew it had happened because friends had posted. Uh, uh, you don't mean the uh, like a ballistic missile attack, but just mm, the fact that the a the notification, notification went, out. went out. Okay, right. so so that was m a more like, how did this even happen? Like, don't we have some fail safeguards, yes. or don't you have to have two people saying, well, exactly. "Are you sure we want to send this message exactly. out to a million people?" So my logical mind surmised within five minutes, bogus. This is a very serious problem. And someone's and in trouble. Yes. Okay, so when the state finally did come out, you just thought, oh my goodness. Well, so we got some systems to look at here, some user yeah. interface. Yes. So, well, I, I, you know, I, being here actually was, uh, from my own perspective, I've, I've seen the whole gamut from people that fortunately ignored their phones or their phones were off. They didn't even realize it was happening. There were no, sir some sirens went off apparently near mm -hmm. the military bases. But if they weren't watching TV and they didn't listen to their phone, I had other a friend, uh, one who just got it and said, oh, this is irritating me. She, and she shut off her phone because she said, this is obviously not happening. Other people were reasonably cautious and said, whoa, I wonder, is this really happening? It's, or, and like you were thinking, oh, it, it's probably not true, but what if it is true? And, and you're faced suddenly with this existential threat that a million of us might just be vaporized in a second. And uh, that was, that was interesting. And then you have other people that went full on and um, and did what I think was sort of natural, could you know, freaking out and getting in the mm -hmm. tub and trying to explain to their kids or going into the manholes or parking in the caves. And, and then uh, all kinds of ramifications that are gonna come out of this. You know, I heard that uh, Target and uh, Target and Walmart kicked the people out yes. and <laughs> get out of our store, whereas Home mm -hmm. Depot said, come into our store. Yes. So we're gonna see, this is uh, Chris Lee, the representative from uh, Kaneohe or Kailua at the east side. He said, we're gonna have a huge treasure trove of data of how people reacted to this. Mm -hmm. Did they clog mm -hmm. the internet? Did mm -hmm. they uh, you know, overload the, the phone lines? Did they end up going to their neighbor next door and bonking him on the head who's, mm -hmm. who's been irritating him with their leaf blower for the last 30 years? And they figure, this is it. <laughs> you know, or did they just, what, 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 what did they do? What did they not do? It's a big wake up call to be prepared for any emergency, I think, fundamentally. Yeah, I think that with Valentine's Day coming up, yes, some people will, may have had the regrets, the saddest words of tongue or pen, are these four words, I might have been. <laughs> I might have been, fill in the blank. Yes. So, yeah, it was, I, I could say it was, we have, this is going to be a lot of discussion about this in the future, and maybe we can come back and talk sure. about this another day about that and some other topics that that sort of are plaguing modern humanity. But for me, the, 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 the overwhelming thing was that this wasn't a tsunami threat or a hurricane or something like that. This was a man-made threat, whether it was turned out to be not real. It could have very been real. And we're talking about humans planning each other's destruction on a unimaginable scale. And that, and that, and and to happen near almost instantaneously, and that this is, you know, we've grown up with this all of mm -hmm. our lives, right? You did, you probably did duck and cover when you were a that kid. That is correct. Yes, and I, I, I remember as a child thinking about that, and you probably remember the movie The Day After, yeah. um, which was Jason Robards, and that was about 1980. It was when Ronald Reagan was president, and then there was the. I remember our, our university had the day after the day after, so we talked about these issues, and it's all kind of madness, isn't it? You know, why can't well, we just all get the, along? <laughs> the, the creative, my creative mind says, you know what? We must have an anti-missile system in place on Oahu, and it will take it down if, in fact, this were true. Well, I would. That is that is nice thinking, and if it's so, that is great. But we fundamentally need to get at these problems of. We're just this floating ball in the middle of space, mm -hmm. and we've all got to figure out how to get along. And uh, when you have people at the helm who mm -hmm. are not acting like sane, rational adults, that doesn't help either. But problem we're not going to solve here today. However, no. probably some people woke up and said, boy, I haven't found love that I'm looking for. That's 
who, <clears throat> who, you know, who am I going to call? And 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 people, who did they call? And 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 what was what were their last words? What were their last thoughts? Did they regret something? Maybe a lot of people were thinking they regretted either love lost or love not found. And so you've been working on this on this topic for a while, um, looking for love in all the right places. So for the people that woke up and had an, have another chance, mm -hmm. really, I mean, we all sort of had a psychic rebirth on uh, Saturday. What, what, what would you say? Where, how do we even begin to look for love in all the right places when we haven't been able to find it before in the past? Well, the traditional systems of finding love have dissolved. The boy next door, the girl next door, mm -hmm. they moved away a long time okay. ago. <laughs> and my auntie is my matchmaker, yes. my cousin, whatever. The biggest problem and the best solution is to use technology as your servant. And the fact that approximately 25 to 30 million Americans are doing online dating tells us something about the movement away from person to person initial meeting to using technology to actually make the connection. Mm -hmm. And I'm a proponent for online dating. And, and because of this, you say it's only 20 to 25 to 30 million. I'm surprised it's so low. It, it could be more, but that's just with the dating services. The, like, I think that's just for Match.com. It could, it could very well e be. eHarmony has maybe 20 million. And probably a lot of them are crossed over anyway. Right, so right. when you were at the Consumer Electronics Shows, did you see anything that was designed to, to help assist people in the, in the, uh, the dating process? Well, the one thing is, uh, the thing that I've learned is the traditional attractor factor. Men go for looks, women go for security. Men go for looks and women go for security. Okay, so as in I was, when I was reading about this before our show, it said something that, that, that men spend some, uh, the majority of the time on the site looking at the images and yeah. the women on the, the text and that m women are also much more likely to ask a friend to kind of proofread their profile exactly. and men just kind of throw it out there. Right, and the sad thing because I have had I had coached several people for online dating. Fortunately, three of them, one got married, mm -hmm. two are engaged. Well, I, wh wh how about if we hear about their stories when we come back from oh, a short break? Uh, as, as always, our time is evaporating <laughs> before us. And, uh, but it's uh, wonderful to be talking with David Tasaka here on Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We are going to take just a short break, so stay tuned for more of the story. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us. And the world I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Hey, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with David Tisaka on his upcoming book series of life enhancements today, specifically about of, uh, all kinds of things because we always have so much to talk about, but specifically looking for love in all the right places. And you mm -hmm. were just saying you were advocate uh, because your auntie's not working anymore, the matchmaker mm -hmm. left the village, um, your neighbor moved away already, mm -hmm. and that, that, that ship sailed. So online is the way to go, and you have some examples of, of three yeah. people recently that mm -hmm. are, or maybe in the past that you wanted to share about. I found that 
like many things, most people might be fearful about online dating. There could be predators and everything. Mm -hmm. One gal says, wow, well, you, you know, that, that could be a sexual predator that's reaching out to me. I said, if you're in church, it could be a sexual predator too. So there's no guarantee. In your church, it could mm -hmm. be too. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so I tell my female, they're mostly female clients, a safety factor is if you meet someone and you know their real name, if you're out for what we call coffee dates, the yeah. pre-dates, yeah. excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, Google him. Yeah. By the time you come back, you'll know what's real. Or if you have his name in advance, I suppose you could just do people search or yes. uh, one of those. Google is your friend. Google's your friend. And with information, you can make better and smarter choices. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and what I've seen is that it's a wild minefield out there. The good, the bad, the ugly, the painful, it's all in there. So the power of the individual looking for love in all the right places is with the right information, they can be empowered to make good and maybe great choices. Mm -hmm. So what are some success stories that you've heard out of this? And maybe inside of those success stories, there were some uh, setbacks or, or issues that came up that uh, so you well, people might come to you and say, David, help me find a, a husband or a wife. Well, one of my clients is a very successful entrepreneur said that I'm planning to retire and I'd like to have someone to do things with. Okay. And she said, I'm not a moocher and I don't want someone mooching uh, off of Okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep our bank accounts separate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so she hired me to actually be her Match.com assistant. So I actually uploaded all of the information from her. Mm -hmm. I actually received all the emails mm -hmm. and then I forwarded it to her. So basically she ran it like a business. I was like the worker bringing all this information to her and then she'll say do this, do this. And so I said, hey, I found this multimillionaire just like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he isn't going to mooch. And he's interested in meeting you. Oh, I don't know, you know, this kind of thing. So finally she said, oh, okay. And because she didn't even want to post a picture. Yeah. So she had a lot of things going against her because sure. men go for looks, women yeah. go for security. And it was all set up. He was going for a six week trip to Europe. And he said, when I get back, I'll love to meet you. When he came back, I said, okay, you know, he's asking to meet with you. Last month she said, I don't want to do it. Tell do or don't? Do I don't want don't, to. Don't want to do okay. this. So uh, just cancel. send an email us, cancel. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Okay. Uh, but if you go for volume, then the problems of the last love in the world dissolve. There's one gal I know who used the online dating service to the tune of having 500 dates wow. before she got married. That's a lot of sifting through the, the <laughs> find the, the needle in the haystack. Yes, and she had a system because you have to process through a lot of people. You have to have a system that's efficient yeah. and empowering and tells the truth quickly. So when, when you're advising clients to do this, well, number one, you gotta, you got to show up, you got to play to win. Exactly. So if you're not even playing to win, you're just sitting home watching TV, you're probably not going to meet somebody online. Well, I have a phrase in this context that says, you can't score your love's touchdown sitting on the bench. Okay, f fair enough. You got to you got to play to win. You got to show up. You got to right. make a profile. And I and I read another statistic for this that says about thirty percent of people they never even end up going on a date. Maybe they're they have mm -hmm. fear of of going out. Or well, many of the individuals who are now looking for love may have either had a bad experience, such mm -hmm. as having gone through a divorce, too busy working. Maybe they were going for their doctorate or medical degree. Yeah. So while other people were dating, they were studying. Yeah. So here they are in their career advancing it, but they may find 
something's missing. I'd like to, rather than reading my technical manuals or medical reports, I'd, I'd like some time for me. Have a glass of wine with somebody mm. I love. Yes. Or, or sit like. on the poach. Or, or like. Yes. Yeah. And so part of the system that we look at is there is a system to actually doing it right and doing it safely. And what does that system, what would those basic guidelines be for you? Do you have, do you have folks fill out a questionnaire that would be in addition to we what they're looking a, for? The, the acronym we have is SEE, -E, and this is mostly for women. It, you should be safe. Uh -huh. You should have a system that's efficient mm -hmm. and effective. Okay. So with those things, at least the system is engaged in a way that protects you. You should have a system how to weed out the funky guys and gals mm -hmm. because there's a lot of them out there. Sure. <coughs> and yet, I'm a wedding officiant also. Yes. And when I ask, where, where did you two meet? When they look at each other with that strange look like, shall we tell Can him? Can we tell him? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they said, well, we met online. I said, congratulations. Yeah, right. I think that there used to be the slightest stigma to it. Yes, right? like, like, oh, you must be hard to have. Right, yeah. or, or, or saying you met in a bar. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what people did. They go, would go to a singles that bar. That and was the old days. Yeah. I think bar hopping for the boomers and some other is passe. It, it passe, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, because we are so tech focused already and mm -hmm. a, a lot of us may work from home mm -hmm. or we become more socially isolated in general. I mean you can attend church online. Uh, exactly. you, you can do almost you can you can bank online. You can do almost everything online these days. So even getting out and meeting people I can imagine can be a daunting experience and, and especially when you're putting yourself out there and exactly. and saying uh, you know you've been through a divorce or maybe mm -hmm. some the love of your life died and mm -hmm. you're putting yourself out there again because you say I got another 30 40 years or, or, or even 20 years or something so when you get out there do you recommend for people to say okay your first first uh, meeting you should uh, go to um, a coffee shop or well here, here's the basic premise of my system is only meet during the day okay <clears throat> drive yourself there yeah meet in a public place yes. like a Starbucks or something uh, your first meeting should be a minimum of 30 minutes and if it's doesn't no chemistry no connection you can back out graciously mm -hmm. don't go for dinner and a movie right. you'll be stuck for four hours yeah. <laughs> yeah and this way there's no investment so if you say well we still got dinner to go but I don't want to do this yeah you can back up and say, it's been great meeting you. Yeah. I wish you all the best in your quest. Yeah. However, I think that we're not a good match. Yeah. And you can just leave. No hurt feelings or anything. And, and quick. And maybe set up those guidelines before you even meet. Oh, and say, definitely. If, if either one of us is just not feeling it for whatever reason, I know you're a quality person, but uh, y y whatever and, it and is. And it's what I call a gracious interaction. And do you have, do you, is it different for people who are older or who have are coming it's, out of relationships? It's very similar. It's identical. The, the main thing for women especially is safe. Is, fe is feeling safe and actually being safe. Being safe, safe right. Yeah. And you want something that's uh, efficient. You, you don't want to have to drag out. It shouldn't be tough. And this is what I teach in my, what used to be or still is, you know, the um, online dating course. And um, we call it date smart you y o u. Date smart you you okay, but uh, as a, a double entendre of university. Yes, yes. And and how can we find that? Just so we throw you, that. You up. can go to datesmartyou.com. So d a t e s, and then another s. Date smart. Okay, oh, date smart one word d a t e s m a r t. U Y O U Y O U dot com. Okay. Or can we find it in a link on your page at davidtasaka dot com? I think I have one there. Okay. Um, but I'll if you follow me on Facebook, I'll be posting, you know, what's coming up. I'm thinking of having one for Valentine's Day next month. Uh, because a lot of people have said, Yeah, I, I see all the thing, but 
I like to come to an actual thing and hear it for myself. Uh, so, and so again, it's date smart you, and it's D A T E S M A R T Y O U dot com. Dot com. That's good. Uh, so you, so you have maybe an event coming up for for Valentine's <coughs> Day. Yes. And yes. what is that like a speed dating thing or? Uh, no, it's actually probably just about an hour course. Okay. Where people will get the basic parameters and information, and from there, my goal is to help them help themselves. Mm -hmm. Because with information, they can make wiser decisions more efficiently, and they'll know why they're doing things and how to do it, and the why and how. And uh, are your clients a, a, a rough mix of the sexes, or would you say it's more women? A lot women more than, women. A lot more women. Women, I found, are more willing to admit, hey, I want a date, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get it. Men said, I can get it any, a date any time, but I'm choosing not to do it yeah. at this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting about the, about the different mindsets of, of how people Well, the might macho this. mindset doesn't want to admit any kind of fragility in this area. Yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, it's, it is... Um, but you got you got to play to win. You got to get out there. And if it's and if it's not online, then then get involved in your community. Volunteer. Oh, definitely. Find it. Find a, a spiritual community that's meaningful. Yep. Uh, tons of organizations you could volunteer for. But even if you belong to those groups, you still have the basic tools yep. that you need to learn: safe, effective, efficient, and efficient. So. It, these are all really good points, and you had one thing that says the love that you are seeking is seeking you. Definitely. I found that for the vast majority of people that there is someone out there for them. Mm -hmm. But in order to find that person, they have to engage the system mm -hmm. of finding them. And in and, and, and this our modern world, it means using technology yes. uh, in a safe, effective, and efficient manner. You got it. Okay. S-E-E. Okay. S-E-E. And so we can, we can go to davidtisaka.com to find out some more information about your, your course where you teach some fundamentals. Well, if they went straight to datesmartu.com. Datesmartu.com, yeah. even more direct. Okay. Direct. And maybe you could put a link on your, on your homepage or on your Facebook, Facebook page. I will do that. And we could just Google... Uh, Facebook David Tasaka Honolulu and yeah. your smiling face will show yeah, up yeah. <laughs> is that true okay. uh, hopefully <laughs> okay. well I always appreciate you being here so much David and I think I we have a lot of topics to talk about because there's some you're, you're an interesting and interested guy and uh, you know passionate about life and your your book series uh, it, which I you know, life enhancement series on health wealth and hap uh, health Wealth, love, and the resulting happiness is so important for us. And we can find Thank out more you. information, again, at, at, at your website as yeah. well. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing those books being published and, and all of the uh, wonderful effects that they're going to have in people's lives. And thank so thank you for, for putting the time into that and, and, and guiding people with your, your wisdom and your passion and your experience. Thank you. And thank you for being here today. Thank you. So unfortunately, we are all out of time and we have to wrap it up again. Um, I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on Think Tech Live Network streaming series on Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Day in 2018. We've been talking with David Tasaka on his upcoming book series, Life Enhancements, uh, a series of life enhancements and look forward to more in the future. So thanks for tuning in and welcome back. I would like to thank our Good folks here at uh, Think Tech Hawaii, our broadcast engineer, Robert Prepus, our technical producer, Ian Davidson, our floor manager, Ray Sengeling, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And we hope that uh, Robert McLean is feeling better, who is out with the flu right now. So I will see you here every other Monday at 3 for more of Out and About on Think Tech. Aloha, everyone.